FA featured Manchester United, Everton and Norwich City. And in the first game, Everton travelled to Manchester United. And after Kevin Sheedy scored the opening goal, the floodgates opened and Everton went on to win by four goals to two. Everton picked up three more points in their next game at home to Norwich City. Only 10,000 fans were at Goodison Park to see Gary Lineker score the only goal of the game to give Everton maximum points from their first two games. But the tables were turned in the return leg just two weeks later when Peter Medham fired home a vicious shot past Neville Southall to upset Everton and earn Norwich their first points in the competition. Norwich faced Manchester United in their next game on November the 6th and shocked the Old Trafford crowd with a Wayne Biggins goal early in the game. Norwich bravely hung on to their lead until midway through the second half and Gordon Strachan was fouled in the area. Norman Whiteside successfully converted the penalty and the game ended in a one-all draw. Manchester United came up against sterner opposition when they travelled to Everton in a thrilling game that either side could have won. The match was eventually decided by a disastrous mistake by United's Frank Stapleton. The final match in Group A was played at Carrow Road as Norwich needed only a tie against Manchester United to earn themselves a place in the semi-finals. This goal by David Williams was enough to give Norwich that valuable point. And although Colin Gibson scored an equaliser, Manchester United crashed out of the Super Cup. Norwich City advanced into the semi-finals. Looking at the final standings in Group A, you can see how Everton dominated the group. What about that upset? Norwich in second place and Manchester United at the bottom with only two points from four games. Group B featured Southampton, Tottenham Hotspur, and Liverpool. And it was Liverpool who gained the first victory when they beat Southampton at Anfield by two goals to one. Danish international Jan Mulby fired Liverpool into the lead with this long-range effort. But Danny Wallace silenced the home crowd when he put this equaliser past Bruce Grobelar. Order was soon restored to the city of Liverpool, though, when Kenny Dalglish was left in front of an open goal to score the winner. Liverpool continued their cup campaign when they entertained Spurs at home. Kevin McDonald squeezed the opening goal past former Anfield favourite Ray Clements, and then Paul Walsh extended the lead with this header. Final score... 2-0 to Liverpool, which left them six points from two games. Spurs went looking for their first points at home to Southampton. They had Mark Falco to thank as he scored the two goals that gave Tottenham a 2-1 victory. Southampton then faced the daunting challenge of facing Liverpool. But when David Armstrong put the home side ahead, it looked like an upset was on the cards. But Paul Walsh had other ideas. And he made no mistake when he found himself unmarked in front of goal to tie the game and leave a final score of 1-1. That point Southampton earned against Liverpool was the only one they would get in the competition. As in the next game, this time at home to Spurs, the Southampton defence came under some heavy fire. Mark Falco opened the scoring for the London side when he took advantage of a goalkeeping error. Poor Peter Knight was making his first team debut and he was blamed for the second goal as well when Clive Allen spotted him a little too far off his line. Danny Wallace pulled a goal back for Southampton in the second half, but it wasn't enough. And Gary Leeworthy put the final nail in the coffin as Southampton dropped dismally out of the Super Cup. The final game in Group B was a formality. The group was already decided when Liverpool beat Spurs 3-0. So as we look at the final standings, we see Liverpool four points ahead of their nearest rival Spurs, who took second place in the group and qualified for the fourth semi-final position. The semi-finals were played in two legs and matched the runners-up and the winners from opposing groups. Norwich City, the surprising runners-up from Group A, played host to Liverpool in the first leg of the first semi-final on February the 5th. Norwich put up a very respectable performance, and in fact, they went ahead thanks to this Kevin Drinkle goal. 
but you can never rule Liverpool out. And sure enough, the old master, Kenny Dalgleish, pulled out some magic with a superb goal. And that's the way it ended. One all with everything to play for in, January, in the second leg. Up third round. The daunting task of having to win at Anfield, that was the uphill struggle that Norwich faced in the return leg on May the 6th. But the underdogs from the East Anglia showed great fighting spirit and went in at half-time with a one-goal lead from a Gary Brook goal. Just as they had done in the first leg, Liverpool bounced back, and it was Kevin McDonald who started the onslaught with this equaliser. Danish international Jan Mulby then put the Merseysiders into the lead from the penalty spot. And Craig Johnston confirmed the result late in the game to send Liverpool into the final of the Super Cup with a 4-2 aggregate victory. In the other semi-final, Tottenham entertained Everton on a cold and snowy evening in North London. Only 7,500 fans braved the weather to see neither side create any real scoring chances. And the game that ended in a scoreless draw. In the return leg at Goodison Park, Tottenham broke the scoring deadlock after Chris Waddle ran half the length of the pitch and delivered an inch-perfect pass to the feet of Mark Falco. It looked like staying 1-0 until 13 minutes from time, when the smallest man on the field, Adrian Heath, headed home the equaliser. The game went into extra time, and it was left to Derek Mountfield to bring the home crowd to their feet when he headed in this free kick. Everton made the game safe when Graham Sharp followed in this shot that Ray Clements could only get his fingertips to. Final score... 3-1 to Everton, and that sent them into the Super Cup final to play Merseyside rivals Liverpool.